Hello, my friends. It has been absolutely driving me crazy, all of the old subscription boxes that I have under this desk right here. I'll pop up a picture here of all of the old boxes that I had at that time, and we haven't really gone through a whole lot of them. And a comment by Ari from Shamelessly Creative. I haven't seen her videos in a while. I hope she's okay. Ari, if you're watching this, let us know if you're okay. Anyway, she said, well, I wonder if some of the stuff in it will expire. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's a really good point. So I want to try and get through one today and see what we have inside and incorporate that into our regular art supplies. So this one, I kind of know what's inside because of what's sticking out of it. And so I chose this one specifically. This is from March, yes, it's old. March of 2019. Yikes! <laughs> a lot of people do also ask me, why don't you just open a bunch of them all in one video? And I don't do that because I want to open each box, enjoy what's inside, actually use what's inside, and see what I think about it so that I can make a decision if I want to keep it or not. And if I open a bunch at once, I just don't have the time to really go through the supplies and enjoy them like I want to. So we're going to do one at a time still. Big palette, cute little instruction brochure. You can tell this is their old one because of the size. All right? So we always have history, project pointers, what's in the box, tools, and some kind of instruction manual here for doing a project. In case you didn't know how to do anything, that will help you. Very nice four by six canvas. Wow, two brushes, that's pretty generous. Ooh, these are even Princeton snap brushes. Sweet, a four round and an eight filbert. That is really nice. An unwrapped eight by 10 hardboard canvas here. Oh, and here's the goods. This is why I wanted to open this one. There we go way to get it out. I'm going to put this box on the floor because my cat is going to really enjoy that. Here we have the gouache. Now this is what I've been looking forward to because I have tried acryl gouache. I've been dying to try the actual watercolor gouache. So acryl gouache is permanent when dry. It's just like regular acrylic but it dries matte and this stuff you can rework. So this is actually like gouache gouache. <laughs> If that makes sense, like when I think of gouache, I think of this stuff, not necessarily the acro gouache, because if you're going to use acro gouache, you might as well just use acrylics, and some acrylics are matte anyway, so I don't get it, whatever. I, I'm not an acro gouache pro, so those of you that are probably yelling at me right now. <laughs> anyway, this is the reworkable kind of gouache, and I cannot be more excited to try this out. Let's give it a try. This set also came with a brush here. And this one has sizing on it. The other two did not. It is a savoir faire. It looks kind of crappy. <laughs> so we may just leave that off to the side. I am not going to swatch all of these colors because I just don't think I want to or need to. I'm going to pull out what I need for my particular painting. I just sketched this little thing from reference on Pixabay, transferred it over to here, and we will get started. And get started, I did. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's been so long since I have like put wet paint down on a palette and used it from the palette wet. It's so exciting. It brought me back to my oil painting days, back in the days when I got prizes for my oil paints and this and that and won awards and oh, it was such a good feeling. So it is great to use a palette with wet paints again and just to mix them right on the palette, figure out what colors you need on the go and just do your artwork. So one thing I noticed with this gouache is it did not spread basically at all unless I put a lot of water in it. And so that was fine with me because the look I was going for was more of a pixelated look anyway. And so adding a lot of water just worked really well for this. I have no idea of the quality of these paints. I assume they are pretty low quality gouache paints. However, it didn't matter to me. I painted with them. I liked them. They were fun to use. I got the colors I wanted and you know, that was that. So yeah, I'm not the greatest uh, expert on your quality of paints because if I like a paint and I use it and it doesn't bother me, I'm good with it. So yeah, you might wanna go to someone like Kimberly Crick and those other pros for getting the quality of your paints. But however, if I were to sell this or have somebody hang it on a wall, I would be very concerned. I would probably just create a print from this artwork instead and use it that way so that I know that it would be archival, it wouldn't fade, 
and so on. So we may do a light fastness test of this separately. We'll see. And that is something you guys might find interesting at least, is that I use a lot of water with this, which I've mentioned. However, there were some times I wanted to get a lighter color and I used the white. However, every time I used the white, I got a very pastel-like color, which is good if that's what you're going for, but if it's not what you're going for, it looks just a little bit out of place on your painting. So if you want to get a light color with this particular brand of gouache, remember that is Savoir Faire, then maybe just add water and only add the white if you're going for a pastel look. So I actually had to go back at the very end and redo some of the sky because I had kind of a peachy pastel look in there that I did not like. So instead, I glazed over that with a watered down version of the bright yellow instead, and I like that much better. And ironically, at this point, I was actually getting kind of tired of painting. And I looked at my clock and oh my gosh, it had only been like 32 minutes. I'm like, seriously, I can't even paint for 32 minutes without getting tired. What the heck? <laughs> Does anyone relate out there? Please relate because I feel really bad. I'm like, okay, ask myself, what's the next thing? What's the next thing I can do? Okay, I've done this. What's the next thing I can do to progress this painting? And I just kept doing that for 30 more minutes. So I only worked on this painting at the beginning for one hour and then I took a break because it felt like forever. I don't know why. I, I enjoyed the process, but I get tired really easily. Anyone, anyone relate? And it got me thinking about my teenage years when I created my best paintings and I did them mostly in one sitting and I realized they were all very simple paintings, yet they turned out amazing because I did them in one sitting without like a whole bunch of hullabaloo, like is that a word? I don't know what the word is, but like not much stress. And they took maybe 45 minutes to an hour and a half and then I was done and I was happy with them and I love them. And I think those are the kind of paintings that I really enjoy. And these paintings I'm talking about are oil paintings. So think about that too, an oil painting that you can sit down and finish in 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Yeah, very, very fun. But I kept going back to this painting and looking at it, like lifting up the palette underneath and looking at it. And I'm like, oh, this is so nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and keep going. All right, after sitting for two days, this is what these look like. They've kind of cracked and fallen off the palette in places. So I'm going to take a spray bottle, spray them, and see what happens for reworking with them today. So yeah, I sprayed them, and then my husband stayed home from work for two extra hours, so I don't really feel comfortable painting and recording while he's here. I feel like I might get interrupted and not get the flow that I'm used to with working with paints. So I put that off, and those paints were sprayed. And then they got to sit for a couple of hours <laughs> while I waited for him to leave. And then I just kind of put drops of water on them after that and it was so easy. They re-wet so easily. It was amazing. I'm, I'm like so happy with that whole thing. Like, yeah, there's little crumbles, but as soon as the crumbles mixed in with water, it was paint again. And I was, I was just thrilled. I'm easy to please. Give me paint, give me paint that works, give me paint that doesn't bug me, and I'm a super happy camper. So <laughs> this paint didn't bug me. I know I've said that before, but oh my goodness, it just didn't bug me. And I've never used gouache before, so I don't have a lot of experience with that, but I liked it. It was so fun. It was super easy to glaze. I got every effect that I ever could have dreamed of, and it was just a really fun project. I strongly encourage you to go out and try gouache. And I didn't know that it would work so well on canvas, but it did. I thought maybe you would just need like watercolor paper or some kind of smooth paper. And I am so excited to try this in my sketchbook and on my bee watercolor paper and my artist watercolor paper and all kinds of paper. So subscribe down below if you don't want to miss that because it's going to be tried. Well, that was fun. <laughs> What do you guys think? Could you paint with gouache? I think you could. One of my favorite things was how easy it was to reuse the stuff on this palette. So I sprayed it and then I didn't get back to it for a couple hours. That was kind of useless to spray it. <laughs> oh well, that's okay. It re-wet super easily. And these brushes, these Princeton snap brushes, were really fun to work with. This has such a fine point that I couldn't work with it very often. You could see that I only worked with it in the really fine places. And so, yeah, 
it's a it's a good point one <laughs> that's for sure and this one here was just awesome you could see i used it for most of the project in fact i see even a few places here i need to go back and i just want to make sure there's paint on every surface here i don't want there to be anywhere that there wasn't paint i want to make sure the canvas is covered fully and that one because i used too much water now has too much canvas showing through so anyway yes i'm going to keep messing with this repeatedly i am sure till i feel that it's just right <laughs> and it's probably still not just right but that's okay pick the wrong brush to find a point all right well anyway so there is our very old smart art box luckily it was not expired everything still worked just fine i'm really grateful to have these brushes to add to my collection Maybe I will stick them just in a separate little container for gouache, even though I think you could probably share gouache and watercolor brushes. Do you guys know? If you know, let me know down below. I'd love to know your thoughts on the matter. And did we leave anything out of the box? This came with the gouache paint. It is going in the giveaway bin because it is bent and I tried to reshape it and it doesn't work and it doesn't hold a point very well. So for someone who doesn't have a brush at all, maybe this will be good, but for me, I don't need it. I guess that sums it up. One more old subscription box out of our bins and we only have like 22 to go or more. <laughs> That's okay. Powerful pack still hasn't shown up. So this is why you're seeing this today. Today is Thursday. This video comes out on Friday. So yeah, you're watching this on Friday if you're watching it the day it's released. It's still lost in the mail somewhere. Oh well, look how unround that is. That's gonna drive me crazy. So we're gonna fix that and you know, keep finding things to fix. I don't think that worked very well. Luckily with gouache, you can kind of erase things. Anyway, was I trying to finish out this video? Yes, 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 I think I was. So today is Friday that you're seeing this. No palette full packs yet. Maybe that will show up today or tomorrow or next week. But you have something to look forward to because I think maybe I saw kind of a sneak peek at what was inside of it. I saw it and I clicked off of it real quick because I wasn't sure I wanted to know, but it looks like it could be a really fun subject if it is what I saw, in which case we're gonna have a blast. Oh, also I did find another canvas to use for my son's acrylic painting. The one I had pulled out that was all warped. If you missed that video, I showed that in this video here. That one was actually a 20 by 24. I thought it was an 18 by 24, but I had another, what I thought was a big canvas in there. And turns out that one is an 18 by 24. It is not warped. So maybe we will work on that acrylic painting. I think it's gonna be acrylic. As long as that canvas works, it's gonna be acrylic anyway. So we have lots to look forward to on this channel. So subscribe if you're new and you don't wanna miss any of that. Little bell for all notifications. See you guys in the next video. Have a great weekend. A lot of people also ask me, why don't you just open a bunch of them and all in A lot of people, <laughs> ah, come on. I'm gonna dump this upside down. I don't, I am, whoa. sorry that was loud. Play some music for me. Time lapse for you. The, yeah, these didn't have sizing on them. I already said that. Who cares? Okay, good, 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 good.